In this video, using the Universe Sandbox Simulator, I'll create the system of the gas giant Polyphemus and its moons, and of course Pandora, the unique moon with life. In a recent video in the Space Engine Planetarium, I showed what this system is like, the system of the gas giant Polyphemus and its moons. And now in the Universe Sandbox Simulator, I will try to create this system myself. Let's see what comes of it. So let's begin. Here you can see the star Alpha Centauri A. It is around this star that the gas giant Polyphemus and its main moon, Pandora, orbit. Well, let's go ahead and place the gas giant Polyphemus. I'll start by taking a random gas giant from here. I've been searching for information on the internet about the characteristics of the gas giant Pandora and other objects. So I've gathered the information and I will be placing everything according to the information from the internet about this system. Polyphemus is located about 1.2 astronomical units from Alpha Centauri A, which is in the habitable green zone. So I'll place it right here. And as you can see, the orbit is right here. I've flown up to it, and as we can see, it has started losing mass. This is all because, guys, it doesn't have a magnetic field. So first, we need to set one up. I read the information and found that its magnetic field is even stronger than that of the planet Jupiter, so we can safely set its magnetic field strength to a full 100 Gauss. And there, an excellent magnetic field has been created. This magnetic field is so huge that all of its moons are located inside it. And so if we clear the fragments and speed up time, we can see that the mass loss from this gas giant has stopped. Now I'll name this gas giant Polyphemus. I'll also need to adjust its appearance, but I'll get to that later. First, the physical characteristics. Its mass is about 1.2 times the mass of Jupiter. I'll set that value. And its diameter is about 123,900 kilometers. But the simulator only uses radius, so I need to divide by 2. And the radius comes out to 61,950 kilometers. Its axial tilt is is about 29 degrees, and a day on it lasts for a little over 10.3 hours. It rotates quite fast on its axis. The gas giant Polyphemus is more massive than Jupiter, but slightly smaller. Here's a comparison of Jupiter and Polyphemus. Next is its composition. I calculated how much of each specific gas should be in the planet's composition, based on a comparison with the mass of Jupiter. And here's the situation we have. Hydrogen is 72%, and here we need to set it to approximately 0.864, like that. It has about 24% helium in its composition. If we take Jupiter as an example, that would be approximately 0.288 of Jupiter's mass. It also has methane, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and water vapor. Together, these elements make up about 4%. I'll set methane to about 0.012 of Jupiter's mass. I'll also add the same amount of ammonia and water vapor. Now, the simulator doesn't have the element hydrogen sulfide, so I'll just add it as sulfur dioxide. 0.012 of Jupiter's mass. And here we can see that the mass has increased a bit because of this. We need to adjust it. And here I see there's silicate as much as 8% of Jupiter's mass. We can simply reduce it by half. The mass dropped, but not enough. I'm reducing it by half again. 1.22 of Jupiter's mass. Well, let's just leave it like that. The radius doesn't change. And now I'll work on adjusting its colors to create the polyphemus we are used to seeing. And here, as we can see in the picture, it's dominated by blue shades and white turquoise shades. So let's make a lot of these layers. And and well, I'll start the adjustments. So in the end, it turned out something like this. And the gas giant Polyphemus has 14 moons, the main one of which is, of course, Pandora. And as the first moon, I'll place Pandora. I'll place it somewhere around here. This is the object we got, it's some kind of random planet. Well, now we'll turn it into Pandora. Oh, look what's happening on this planet. Well, okay, we'll figure it out later. First, we need to sort out its orbit. A day on Pandora is 27 hours long. And of course, it's tidally locked to the gas giant Polyphemus. That means a 27 hour day and the orbital period period should also be 27 hours, since it's tidally locked. So I'm setting the day on Pandora to 27 hours, and I'm making it tidally locked by pressing this button. We need to set the orbital period to 27 hours. See how Pandora moved closer to the gas giant. That was cool. And we need to lock it again just in case, so that Pandora always faces Polyphemus with the same side. Now I'll name Pandora Pandora, because how could I not? 
and now I'll work on its physical characteristics. Pandora's mass, according to information from the internet, is 0.72 of Earth's mass, and the diameter is 11,447 kilometers. Since the simulator here doesn't have diameter but radius, I need to divide this value by 2, and the radius comes out to 5,724 kilometers. Pandora's axial tilt is 29 degrees. And we also need to set the correct orbital inclination for Pandora, so that it matches Polyphemus's tilt. I can just move this slider like this. And overall, I think this orbit for Pandora will be really correct. Although it should probably be a little less, like this. There, I think this will be just right. Although, maybe even less. This will be perfect. I searched for a lot of information on the internet about Pandora's magnetic field. I found information that Pandora's field is non-uniform like Earth's, but it seems to be more powerful or something like Earth's. Well, let's not guess, I'll just set the magnetic field strength to about 0.5G. Let's just leave it like that. And now for the most important part, setting up the atmosphere, oceans, and the Pandora we're familiar with. Let's hide the atmosphere and clouds and see what kind of planet this is. It's something strange. There's an ocean of sulfur dioxide and water. Well, we definitely need to get rid of this ocean. We'll remove the water too. I'll add everything back later to make it right. Well, the simulator is already showing the whole planet as green. That's interesting, yeah. And here I've done some calculations on what the concentration of each specific gas should be in Pandora's atmosphere. Based on Earth's atmosphere, taking into account Pandora's radius and Earth's radius, basically. To start, there's this sulfur dioxide. I'll remove it completely. And I'll also remove this ammonia. And that leaves only oxygen. The oxygen on Pandora is about 21 to 22 percent. According to my calculations, based on Earth's atmosphere, this should be 0.1935. Something like that anyway. That's the value. But here, the main component of the atmosphere is nitrogen. And the nitrogen here, according to my calculations, is about 0.75 of Earth's atmosphere. And as soon as I added the nitrogen, our vegetation came back. And of course, there's a lot of carbon dioxide here, as much as 18%, which is why humans can't breathe on Pandora without a mask. And calculated for one Earth atmosphere, considering Pandora's radius, it comes out to about 0.162. Also, on Pandora, there's xenon 5.5%, but there's no xenon here in Universe Sandbox. So I'll just add that value to Argon, let's put it there. And according to my calculations, it comes out to 0.049. But humans can't breathe this gas either, and Pandora also has methane and hydrogen sulfide. Together these chemical compounds make up about 1%. Well anyway, methane, I'll set the value to 0.0045. And since there's no hydrogen sulfide here, I'll just add it to sulfur dioxide. Here's sulfur dioxide, also 0.0045 of one Earth atmosphere. The information on Pandora says that the pressure on its surface is 0.9 atmospheres, but here it comes out to 1.26 atmospheres. But in other sources, I found information that the pressure is actually higher than on Earth, so I don't know who's right and who's wrong. Let's leave it at 1.26 atmospheres. But the density of this atmosphere is higher than Earth's by 20%. And now the only thing missing is liquid oceans on Pandora. I'll try to add it through the composition. Whoa, it flooded everything right away. And here we see it's not working quite right. Let's try reducing this value. I'll lower the sea level, and the elevation map visual doesn't look very good. I need to change it. Here you can take and set, for example, planet 12. I'll try using that. And now I'll reduce the water level. Let's leave it like this for now. I see a lot of water has gone into the atmosphere, I'll remove it from there. Although it comes right back. Well, anyway, I need to fast forward time and see what we get in the end. So time is passing, and the temperature seems to be rising now, but it's not critical enough for the liquid water to evaporate. Yeah, the temperature is high, it's getting way too high. I need to use the average albedo, which is set to almost zero here. That means all the sun's rays are hitting this moon. Let's set this value to around 34%, which is close to Earth's values. And the temperature is still rising. Maybe it's because of the large amount of carbon dioxide a strong greenhouse effect has formed here. The greenhouse effect is 75 degrees, and there are two layers of atmosphere here. Well, let's make it one layer of atmosphere here. I can also manually reduce the greenhouse effect here. I'll set the value to say 25%. And yes, that finally helped and our temperature has reversed. Excellent. And now I see a lot of water from the atmosphere is starting to fall back into the ocean. I increased the average albedo a bit more and reduced the greenhouse effect. And finally, I managed to get normal values. On Pandora, the average temperature is around 20 something degrees Celsius. And here I have 23 something degrees. Basically, the temperature is normal. Well,
well, as we can see, there's still quite a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere, and it doesn't want to fall back as rain, even though it's gotten colder on Pandora. Oh well, but the amount of water and land isn't enough, there should be more water on Pandora, so I'll try to add a little more. Like this, I'm increasing it. Let's have more and more and even more water like this. I need to make it look like it does here, and uh, I don't really like it. What is this? Let's try updating the elevation map again. This time I'll set it to planet 13. And it all looks a bit wonky? Come on, it should be better, jeez. There's a sea level value here, I'll try to change the water concentration here. It flooded everything. Okay, let's increase it. Okay, well this seems a bit better, but it's still not what I'd like. I'll try planet 11, and I'll move this slider again. Oh, this looks promising. Okay, I'll increase the water, but no, I'll increase the land. Well, basically, this looks more or less similar, right guys? Especially if you compare it like this, it looks really similar. I'll increase the land a bit more to about this level. Yeah, this is really better, guys. Now I want to configure the clouds to make them look similar. Let's have wispy clouds here, like these. They fit perfectly. And for the second type of clouds, let's make them turbulent. Well, that seems good, right? Also, the atmosphere. I think it wouldn't hurt to add Earth's haze here. And here you can completely remove this, this opacity. Basically, it's fine. Well, although you could set it to maybe... 3% like this. When I added water, the temperature rose a bit because the water vapor in the atmosphere increased. About 26 something degrees Celsius. Well, in principle, Pandora is a hot planet in the movie anyway. And so, if you look at it like this, it's starting to look like something similar. But now I need to add the other 13 moons of Polyphemus. Pandora is the fifth moon of the gas giant Polyphemus, so I need to place four more in front of Pandora. Well, I'll just take some random moons. Let's have the first one orbit somewhere around here. The second one will orbit somewhere around here, and the third moon will be somewhere around here. Then it turns out the sixth moon will be here. I'll put the seventh one here, the eighth somewhere here. The ninth will be somewhere around here. The tenth here, the eleventh here, the twelfth here, and the thirteenth here. Just like that, randomly. I won't spend too much time configuring them. I've placed the moons, these are their orbits. Let's just leave it all like this. And now let's check out the appearance, how it all turned out. Let's go down to Pandora, somewhere on this continent, and in the daytime let's look at the sky. What can we see here? Okay, Alpha Centauri A. And here we have Polyphemus, it's not in a very good phase right now. And now we're going to have a solar eclipse on this moon. There, and we have a solar eclipse. It immediately got dimmer or something. Well, the solar eclipse is over. Now the star will set behind the horizon and I think we'll see a stunning view of the gas giant Polyphemus from the surface of Pandora. And so here it is, revealing itself. Yeah, I'd like Polyphemus to be in a fuller phase than what we're seeing now. Now that's more like it. Look at that view of the gas giant Polyphemus. I'll speed up time a little. Here we see some of the moons orbiting and it's casting a shadow on Polyphemus, but I'd really like to see even more moons. Here we can see a large dark shadow on Polyphemus, maybe from Pandora, or perhaps from another one of its large moons. Look, more moons have now risen into view. Well, a rather large moon just passed by. Well, it looks very realistic, just like we saw in the movie, really. Yeah, I managed to create something. And now I want to create this shot for you. For that, I just need to move Pandora closer to Polyphemus. And so I was able to recreate something similar. Look, it's really very similar to this picture. It turned out perfectly, I think you'll agree with me. And so this is the Polyphemus system and its moons that I've created. I tried my best for you and I think it turned out well. So don't be shy with the likes and leave a comment. Thank you very much.